Good evening, I'm Shug Mohammed, and this is the 11 o'clock news. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of support and solidarity to the Jordanian monarch King Abdullah II on the floods that struck the Jordanian kingdom today and resulted in human and material losses. His Majesty the King affirmed the kingdom's support and solidarity with Jordan in all circumstances. He stressed the deep-rooted relations between the two countries and the keenness on further developing them in all fields, as well as continuing consultation and coordination in various affairs of mutual interest. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decrees 50, 51 and 52 for 2018. Royal Decree 50 stipulated the appointment of Dr. Samah Mohammed Suleiman as General Director for Bahrain Training Institute in the Ministry of Education in the rank of Assistant Undersecretary. Royal Decree 51 stipulated the appointment of Nader Yusuf Abdullah Dean as Assistant Undersecretary for Land Transport in the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications. Royal Decree 52 stipulated the appointment of Ahlam Ahmad Khalif al Amr as Assistant Undersecretary for Curricula and Educational Supervision in the Ministry of Education. During a panel discussion alongside the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman and the Prime Minister of Lebanon, Saad al Hariri, at the Future Investment Initiative in Riyadh, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, outlined Bahrain's strong economic fundamentals, which have ensured the kingdom has never witnessed a year of negative growth. Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here. And in my opening statement, I think in answer to your question, I would first like to extend my thanks to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and the State of Kuwait for their very generous stand and understanding and belief in what we are trying to do. In 2008, when we launched uh, Vision 2030, we based it around a set of principles. Those principles were competitiveness, fairness, and sustainability. Now we knew if we wanted to tackle sustainability, we had to have enough wind in our sails. So there was a great deal of deficit spending, especially after the financial crisis of 2008 and the troubles that we faced in 2011. I am very happy to report that the Kingdom of Bahrain has never shown a year of negative growth. Ever. We put in place a number of policies to help us achieve that goal. So we tackled, let's say, six major factors of production. We made sure that land was accessible, energy was accessible, labor was accessible, capital was accessible, the laws were in line with what needs to be considered best global practice, and we had international connectivity, both physical and digital. Those were the main things that we focused on in the last 10 years. Of course, you've just heard me not mention sustainability. The levels of spending that we had uh, put in place were not sustainable with the current economic structure. We were very successful in diversifying our economy. And last year, our non-oil growth was 5%, which is, which is quite remarkable, really, for the region, considering the challenges we One face. One of the highest in the region. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know if uh, this is known, but uh, because we have diversified our economy, oil is only 80% of our GDP. However, here's the problem. Our government revenue did not match our economic growth. So oil accounts today for 75% of government revenue. And this is unsustainable at current expenditure. So the goal of this fiscal uh, injection, if you want to call it that, we like to call it uh, a, uh, fiscal, a structural fiscal balance package, allows us to restructure our economy to be more ready and more capable of being sustainable well into the next decade. We will do a number of things to achieve this. The first being we will reduce our operational costs of doing business in government. Two, we will balance the accounts of our electricity and water generation because, frankly, right now that's one of the top three major drains 
on our, uh, uh, on our budget. Third, we have introduced an early retirement package or a voluntary retirement package, actually. It's very successful. I think uh, uh, to date we have over 6,000 applications. It may be a bit more. I haven't checked the numbers in the last <coughs> two days. And lastly, we have uh, successfully introduced the VAT system, the Gulf VAT system, and that is something I'm very proud of the Bahraini people for doing. It's not an easy thing to do, and it passed with flying colors through our parliament. So, in short, I think while we are an oil economy, we don't want to remain strictly tied to it as a source of income. Let's think of it this way. We need to move from an oil economy to a smart oil economy. And if we succeed at doing that, I will have been a success. Your Highness, most of the investors in this hall are here to invest in Saudi Arabia. How do you convince them to come to Bahrain? <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble. That's the question. That's the question. That's the question. <laughs> All right. Well, here's the Actually, thing. they're investing and we're investing in Bahrain. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> His Royal Highness stole the words out of my mouth. The uh, people are investing in Bahrain. And the good news is that in 2015, uh, FDI was about $65 million, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it was, it was good for that year, if you consider the drop in the price of oil and all of the other ancillary, uh, ancillary economic activity that got affected. But this year, we're forecasting over 600. So that is a tenfold increase in three years. Wow. Alhamdulillah. But here is the even better news. Any growth in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, any reform in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, any success in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is very contagious for the region. We see a very bright future as the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia continues to reform and continues to invest in all of these mega pro or giga projects as they're called in English. And uh, frankly, um, we've seen it. Uh, I have been uh, on the forefront of the reform agenda, well, since we first met each other about 20 years ago. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I first met uh, Basim, it was I, I think on a dusty day in, uh, in Aqaba, maybe in Jordan, or was it in uh, Amman, maybe? I'm not sure. It was in the Red Sea, actually. It was at the Red Sea. <laughs> Red Sea. But. Uh, I was 15 then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you managed to keep. Uh, <laughs> I went gray. But the, uh, the dreams are still the same dreams. The view that His Royal Highness has for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is what we all want for our countries. And if Saudi Arabia, which is the main engine of growth for this whole region and the main pillar of stability, is successful and is growing, then we are all doing very well. So in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, growth in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is good for us. Please invest in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, all of you that are here, please invest. <laughs> Because when you invest in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, you are investing us, and the world is a safer place. Your Thank Royal you Highness, much. don't worry, we have 50 billion US dollars <laughs> yesterday and today. Brilliant. 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 Well, your Royal Highness, your inspirational comments are laid down as a marker for us to rally, it's a rallying cry, for us to rally around, and we will support you in all your endeavors. You have a brother in Bahrain, and I know in Lebanon, and many among you here, we are so proud to see you so, say those words and mean them. Mashkur, Allah. Uh, 86 years ago, 86 years ago, we found... 86 years ago. 86 years ago, we found a tremendous resource under the soil of the desert, oil. And we built pipelines, and we built refineries, and we built ports to ship that oil and that valuable resource to the world. And with that money, we built schools, we built universities, we built hospitals, we built housing, and we built 
the modern countries in which we live. Today, the power that we must unleash in the Arab world is the power of innovation, al-ibtikar. And we must give people the tools to succeed in that. So the pipelines that we build in the future are lines of credit and support for startups and for, for, uh, for businesses all over the region. The refineries that we build must be the incubators that house and allow great ideas and companies to be born. And the ports are the infrastructure and our connectivity to the world, whether that be physical infrastructure in aircraft and whatnot, or the digital uh, infrastructure that we need so that we can compete on an equal footing with, with any other geography uh, that is known to us. I am so proud of His Royal Highness's pride in the people of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We are also proud of the people of Bahrain. I know Your Excellency, the people of Lebanon are always in your mind. We must be proud as Arabs, ka'arab, niftikhir, tarikhna, uturathna. We must be proud of who we are. Waliyaham, min ali mumkin naku, who we can be. We should always think of who we can be. And on this journey, I wish you all well, and I am honored to be here. By your side, Allah. Meanwhile, Bahrain's ambassador to Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, lauded the outcomes of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's visit to Riyadh and his talks with the custodian of the two holy mosques and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince. Sheikh Hamoud also asserted that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's visit was successful and fruitful for the best interests of both countries. He further noted that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's attendance and participations in the forum reflects the outstanding bilateral relations, affirming that his speech in the forum was clear, comprehensive and accurate, and conveyed an optimistic picture of the near future of Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and all the region. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today received the Ambassador of the Russian Federation to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Vagig Garayev, at Gdaibiya Palace, to mark the end of the Ambassador's service in the Kingdom. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the steady growth of ties between Bahrain and Russia. His Royal Highness extended thanks and best wishes to the Ambassador for his service and further enhancing bilateral relations between the two countries and wished him every success in his future endeavors. Regional and international issues of mutual interest were also discussed. For his part, the ambassador expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and for the support he received during his tenure in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated the owner of the 1GC company, Harith Al Atawi and Hala Suleiman, for winning the first edition of the Palace Pioneers program under the title of Technology to Serve Humanity. They earned the highest votes from the audience and judging committee during the closing ceremony that was held in the UAE. His Royal Highness affirmed the role of the initiative launched by His Royal Highness the Duke of York, Prince Andrew, to enhance creativity and entrepreneurship, wishing the youth pioneers success in achieving their goals. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, participated in a discussion session organized by the UAE's Arab Youth Center in cooperation with the Ministry of Youth and Sports. His Highness stressed that nothing is impossible and a person has to exert all efforts to achieve one's goals. The session began with a speech by the UAE Youth Affairs Minister Shama bin Suhail Al Mazrui in which she described His Highness as an exceptional guest under the 100 Mentors program held under the patronage of the Crown Prince of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. She congratulated His Highness Sheikh Nasser on winning the Ironman Championship. His Highness then received a commemorative gift from the Minister of Youth and Sports, Hisham Joder. أنا ما أعتقد إني أنا وصلت يمكن عشرة عشرين بالمية من اللي أنا أتمنى لحد الآن لأن اللي أنا أشوفه أمام بعيد أشوف غيري شايل هذه الراية وأشوف نفسي أيضا 
نسخة تختلف عن هذه النسخة ولكن ما كانت سهلة بالنسبة لي أبدا ما كانت سهلة بالنسبة لي أني كل ما أحصل يكون موجود لأن أعتقد أن كثير من الناس اللي مثلا ما جلسوا معي أو ما شافوني بشكل يومي أو ما عرفوا اللي أنا يعني أحارب عشانه بشكل يومي يظنون كل مطلوب سهل وكل شيء أطمح له بيكون موجود وكل شيء أبغيه بيكون عندي وهذا خطأ أكثر الأمور اللي أنا أسويها واللي أنا أقوم بها واللي أضعها أمام النصب بعيني تكون شبه مستحيلة تكون شبه مستبعدة أنها هي تحقق لكن شو أسوي أنا ما أخذ الأمر بفردي وروح بنفسي وحاول أنجز هذه أخلق الفريق اللي حولي اللي يقدر يترجمها أخلق الفريق وثم أكون أنا في الصف الأمامي من مبادرات من أعمال من منجزات إدارية ومن منافسة من تحدي كل هذه صارت بالنسبة لي شبه غير مستحيل ف أبي أعطيكم مثال بسيط لا نروح في التحدي والبرفورمنس والرياضة وإلى آخرة خلونا نروح إحنا في أمور إدارية عندي كثير من الشباب هني حولي الحين كانوا يخدمون معاي أو ما زالوا يخدمون معاي في قطاع الشبابي والرياضي ويعرف الأخ هشام ويعرف الأخ عبد الرحمن عسكر عندي في اللجنة الأولمبية البحرينية أن إحنا اليوم طموحنا فوق السماء وإمكانيتنا تحت المعقول وزود على هذا إحنا لبينا نداء الوطن في اليوم الترشيد والتقليص وإلى آخره هذا كانت سنة إعلانات وسنة تحديات وسنة وعود ما ترددنا رحت وأعلنت التحديات كلها أمام جلالة الملك رحت من من الناحية الرياضية أعلنت عام الذهب قلنا هالسنة بننجز الذهب من أكثر السنوات اللي طافت علينا وفعلا قدرنا أن إحنا ننجز أكثر الذهبيات فعلا قدرنا إحنا ننجز أكثر المبادرات الشبابية ونحصل عليها إشادة دولية فمعناته إداريا إحنا ولله الحمد بخير كذلك المؤسسة الخيرية الملكية أنا استلمت مؤسسة الخيرية الملكية في 2009 وما زالت بنفس الميزانية ما زالت بنفس الميزانية من كانت لجنة صغيرة تهتم في شؤون بسيطة إلى أن الآن إحنا على العالم ككل نساعد الداخل ونساعد في الخارج وعندنا حول عشر تلاف يتيم وأرم الله نهتم فيهم بشكل يومي فهي المسألة مسألة إدارة مسألة حلول ومسألة أن الواحد دائما يلقى الحل The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa inaugurated the third FAI World Cup of Indoor Skydiving in the presence of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the President of the Champions High Committee, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. Also present was the head of the Chechen Assistant on Cooperation with Law Enforcement Agencies, Daniel Martinov, a number of international senior officials, presidents of sports federations, air sports enthusiasts, journalists, and media personnel. Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa affirmed that the kingdom's success of hosting this world championship is a remarkable sports achievement and reflects the confidence of international sports federations in the organization and the logistic abilities of the kingdom. He noted that the government and the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister is keen on providing support to the sports sector and athletes and on providing all the required potentialities that enable them to make achievements in various sports events. He added that His Royal Highness the Prime Minister always appreciates every sports achievement that contributes to raising the status of the Kingdom and that His Royal Highness's keenness on sports stems from his belief in the important impact of sports on developing their competitiveness. Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa asserted that hosting the championship in the kingdom and the presence of a large number of athletes raised the kingdom's status as a regional country for indoor skydiving. He hailed the efforts of the championship's high committee led by Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa in organizing the championship and providing all the success factors in accordance with the kingdom's regional and international status. He expressed pride in the outstanding creative abilities of the people of Bahrain. 
The president of Bahrain Air Sports Federation, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, and His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad for their interest in sports and athletes in the kingdom. He commended the role of Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa in promoting the indoor skydiving sports. For the first time in the Kingdom of Bahrain, in Asia and the Middle East, Gravity opened its doors and gathered the best flyers from around the world under one roof. The sports event will host five different disciplines in body flight, bringing a remarkable airborne experience in one of the tallest glass wind tunnels in the world. First of all, we'd like to congratulate the Kingdom on hosting such an event. Of course, such an event will uh, uh, increase the hotel occupancy rates in Bahrain and also create a marketing and a promotion internationally as a sports tourism destination. Alhamdulillah, we see there are uh, many of uh, sports events, international events, and this definitely, at the end of the day, uh, generates uh, uh, a lot of uh, noise internationally, positive uh, image and injects directly to the economy. Uh, we are very interested in how the organization is going to go through. And we also want to see how the competitors uh, will do, because it's a lot of teams from all over the world. И Бахрейн сейчас как организатор именно вот в этих соревнованиях является практически номером один в мире. And the Kingdom of Bahrain is organizer of this championship is in his opinion number one in the world. The international event brought together the most advanced indoor skydiving athletes from around the world, which included more than 100 teams from 25 countries. The event is the biggest indoor skydiving meet to ever take place with the local participation in this competition, which highlights Bahrain's role in encouraging sports and local participation on an international scale. I think hosting a World Cup in Bahrain means a lot because this shows the world that Bahrain has the cap capability of and caliber for Bahrainis and locals to represent um, the country and show the hospitality, hospitality that we can provide uh, plus the um, organization. I'm sure a lot of uh, other uh, World Cups or championships are happening around the world, but I'm very proud to be a Bahraini because all of our events are usually successful, same as all other big events happening here in Bahrain. This is a very important event. I think it's uh, one of the biggest in the world for this uh, World Cup, and I think uh, Bahrain has done a great job in organizing uh, this event, and also uh, Bahrain, you know, hospitality is well known. And I think uh, it's a great opportunity to put Bahrain you know, in the spotlight of the world, you know, admiration for its uh, hosting this event. Hosting the competition puts Bahrain on the sporting map and highlights the kingdom's continuous support in enriching the sports sector and youth programs in Bahrain, which has helped create a competitive and challenging generation of sportsmen in Bahrain, the Gulf and the Arab world. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa witnessed today the concluding stage of the Joint Bilateral Naval Drill Bridge 19 implemented by the Royal Bahrain Naval Force and the Royal Saudi Navy's Eastern Fleet. The BDF Commander-in-Chief was received by the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr al naimi the Saudi Naval Force Task Commander, a number of BDF senior officers and the Royal Saudi Navy's Eastern Fleet officers. The Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed was briefed on the stages of the drill since its beginning. The BDF Commander-in-Chief welcomed all the participants in the drill and conveyed to them the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, expressing appreciation for their participation in the drill. He wished them success in improving the combat efficiency of the naval forces, weaponry and special forces. 
The BDF Commander-in-Chief expressed thanks and appreciation for the efforts of the Royal Saudi Navy's Eastern Fleet officers. He added that both sides perceive the imminent threats against the region and are capable of facing them. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed affirmed that military cooperation between the two countries are based on established principles and has completed many stages in which many achievements in various fields were made. He stated that the Kingdom of Bahrain, upon the directives of His Majesty the King, supports all forms of joint cooperation with GCC countries. He hailed the performance level of the Bridge 19 drill and the cooperation between the participants, as well as a leading and distinguished level and performance during the execution of the various commanding and combat tasks, which reflected the development of the participating forces. He expressed satisfaction in the positive results achieved by the various participating forces during the drill stages, expressing appreciation and thanks to all the participants and wishing them success. يعتبر تمرين جسر 19 سلسلة من ضمن التمارين المشتركة والمختلطة بين القوات البحرية الملكية السعودية وسلاح البحرية الملكي البحريني الذي يهدف إلى رفع الجاهزية القتالية لأطقم السفن لمواجهة التهديدات في المنطقة كما أنه يعزز روح الترابط بين المملكة العربية السعودية ومملكة البحرين يعتبر تمرين جسر من أقوى التمارين البحرية المشتركة سواء من حيث المستوى وحجم القوات المشاركة ومعدات القتال المستخدمة وتكمن أهمية التمرين في توحيد المفاهيم القتالية التي بدورها تخلق قوة بحرية موحدة Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim al Mulla, received today the President of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation and Vice President of the Supreme Council for Environment, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid al Khalifa. The Speaker lauded the efforts being exerted by the SCE to preserve the national and regional environment, hailing Bahrain's progress in the environment field. The Mullah pointed out that the Constitution and the National Action Charter guaranteed the protection of the environment and achievement of balance between the requirements of development and social and economic aspects, stressing the Representatives Council's support for the efforts being exerted to develop programs aimed at protecting the environment and its resources. For his part, His Highness Sheikh Faisal expressed thanks and appreciation to the Speaker for the meeting, noting that he looks forward to more cooperation between the two sides for the best interests of the nation and the citizens. The Minister of Finance, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in a session on financial balance along with his Saudi counterpart, Mr. Mohammed Abdullah Jidan, on the sidelines of the Future Investment Initiative 2018 in Riyadh. He asserted the importance of financial balance as a pillar of development. The Minister pointed out that reaching the financial balance has positive repercussions on the work of the government as a whole, the private sector, and the society in general adding that it's also a positive message to the business sector that the financial and economic infrastructure is suitable for investments. He also noted that the intention here is not to reduce government spending, but to steer it in sound ways to ensure the maximum return of the existing financial resources. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, inaugurated the Leadership Excellence for Women Awards and Symposium, LIWAS 2018. The ceremony was attended by a number of leading engineers and government institutions and agencies, oil and gas companies and civil authorities from the GCC. Empowerment of women is you know, a global topic. Now in the oil and gas uh, sector in general, the region has not had a high penetration of women in, in the workplace. Uh, we're only at 10%. Uh, in Bahrain, I think we're proud for the first time to have a general manager who is a woman, Afaf Zain Al-Abidin, she's general manager of finance. Uh, we hope to see in the very near future engineers, women engineers, come into the workplace and uh, have the opportunity to uh, compete in the leadership roles. I've been coming to Bahrain for many, many years and to see the change from few women to lots of women, it's all due to the management, both at Babco, Tatwir, the ministry, this minister is very progressive, so was the previous minister. So I think they all believe that women should achieve much more than they do right now. 
The Minister of Oil also visited the UKEM E arena, which is dedicated to catalyzing young professionals in the industry and increasing their engagement in the sector. A very active uh, young engineer society, the Bahrain Chemical Engineering Society. Uh, a lot of young women are uh, members and the founding members of that committee. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's uh, very promising for the future and uh, I encourage a lot of the youth to consider the oil and gas sector. It is a promising sector. Uh, there's a lot of technology being applied to combat uh, the, uh, any environmental negative uh, effects of pollution, etc. It is a, a cleaner industry than, than was before uh, and very much encourage uh, people to choose it as a career path. UKME is a co-located event in the GDA conference. Um, we are targeting young professionals under those who have worked uh, for less than five years um, in the industry and also students at university, those who are doing chemical engineering or any type of engineering. So we want to inspire these students, utilize this opportunity to get them connected with different companies in the industry, oil and gas, and also get them to hear from senior executives. And after three highly successful days, the much-anticipated GDA conference and exhibition came to a close. Striving towards excellence, the forum aimed at engaging regional and international stakeholders across the sector to capitalize on investment, innovation and growth. This event used to be known to be a Petrotech event and now we put this association together and we called it Gulf Downstream Association, hopefully leveraging the industry and creating a network for people to join and engage and learn from each other. So it's a great start for GDA and my expectation that the future events for GDA would be successful and with higher participation from the industry. During the last two days and today we have gone through extensive discussions with the very involved panel discussions that uh, invited many of our uh, expertise and professionals and leaders in our industry that addresses major issues that our industry is going to see in the future. We also equally have many technical sessions that also are addressing all the concerns and issues and new challenges that our industry is going to see in the future. We hope we had managed to capture all the areas of interest that will be facing our industry. We are counting on the continuation of these discussions and addressing these issues. GDA wants to see itself as a, uh, an organization that will help drive the agenda for resolving all of these uh, uh, challenges in the future in collaboration with all the stakeholders that we are dealing with. In implementation of the Fiscal Balance Program, the Chief Executive Officer of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mohammed Ali Al-Qaid, chaired the meeting of the Information Technology Expenditure Reduction Work Team upon the decision of the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee on Finance and Control of Expenditure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al-Khalifa. At the beginning of the meeting, Al-Qaid hailed the importance of the decision to form a team aimed at contributing to the sustainability of the financial situation expressing aspirations to make further achievements in this field. He stated the team's work is aimed at developing a comprehensive plan that monitors the current status of IT expenditure and assesses all aspects of cost reduction and coordination with the Ministry of Finance. He added that the IT operations review team had to be reformed to provide appropriate recommendations to government agencies. The annual Minama Dialogue opens its doors to its platform, which accommodates sessions and speeches addressing and discussing the best ways to tackle the region's issues and challenges. More on this report with Sarah Lebrek. The IISS Manama Dialogue is set to take place in Bahrain on the 26th until the 28th of October 2018. This year's summit will see a diverse group of prime ministers, defense ministers, foreign ministers, national security advisors and military and intelligence chiefs gather for three days of debate on ways to address the Middle East's most pressing security challenges. The dialogue provides opportunities for government leaders to engage directly with the leading experts in the region and facilitates private, bilateral and multilateral meetings between participating states.
The outcome and the quality of sessions of the Manama Dialogue organized by the International Institute for Strategic Studies, the IISS, are always diverse and tackle the entire world's most pressing issues and challenges. Opening this year's Manama Dialogue is His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Hussein. Key speakers include U.S. Secretary of Defense James Mattis, who will be delivering a major speech at the IISS Manama Dialogue. The stages of the dialogue as the Middle East leading security summit and central platform for decision makers coming from all around the globe fills Bahrainis with immense pride. It is a huge indicator of Bahrain's important diplomatic position and its fruitful relations with international partners. This platform also showcases the region's realities and experiences. One of the main outcomes that come from the Manama Dialogue is the discussion of major issues like the stability in the Middle East, cooperation in setting general policies, combating terrorism, and enforcing regional and international security. The analysis and perspectives projected in the dialogue reflect its substantial contribution in the field of international strategic and security studies. This is Sarah Lebrek, reporting for Bahrain International.